Hello guys, we are back on the Minecraft server for Church Mag, and I made a little progress. Let me show you guys this. So I want to talk a little bit today about a topic for Church Mag Minecraft Theology, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of updates of what I've been doing, and then we're going to get to a project I have going on. So I made some progress here, actually I think the fast route. I'm always hesitant about this, but let's go ahead. Um, I've lost my armor a couple different times. I go AFK around here, so I keep having to make my little uh, diamond boots and helmet over and over again. So I have Aqua Affinity, Respiration, and Depth Strider. But we have all of this done. I need to work on the holes. And if we go up here, I have a lot done inside as well. So. Let me take you up here in a minute. I do plan on actually removing all of this. I just, it's easier to get rid of the water while this is all still here. So all of this is drained out. We can actually go around the other side. Again, that's all drained out as well. And I think a couple of other different layers um, are as well. But I think we can go up here. Let's see. Nope, we cannot go up there. Um, a couple other layers are drained out as well, but for the most part, it looks like we're about a fourth of the way done. This is a long process, guys. If you have never done this yourself, it does take quite a while. Um, a couple different times we've had glitches where the water ac or the server actually reset itself. Not that we lost the whole map, but that's the progress I had done, everything that you were holding, you would actually lose. And unfortunately, at that time, I had been holding a bunch of sponges. So a lot of the setbacks are actually not necessarily because of just the time it takes, but just some random things that have been happening in this process. So, yeah, we are going to... Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you. Look down here. If you notice, um, I had put a wall around here. Um, I've replaced that now with blue glass. So if we come down here, you can actually see, and I really, really love this. I love the look of it. And if you're inside, we'll take a look at this here in a second. If you're inside, it actually looks really cool as well. Let's see if we can get down here. So if you're in here, you can actually look out into the water as well. So I really like how this looks with the blue glass. Um, we're eventually going to make another portal for this place. Um, we're going to turn this into an underwater city, as I've mentioned before. Um, but with that underwater city, what we are going to do is actually make it a thriving metropolis, kind of like the city of Atlantis. Uh, we've got our orange clay we need to get some more of, not a ton, but just enough to create the borders. And then I think we'll be ready to add to this. So let me see. Actually, I said we're a fourth of the way. Here's the center. Yeah, I'd say we're about a fourth of the way. Yeah, so I still have a bunch to do here. But as soon as you get down there, it is so much easier. Um, the process I've been using has been really, really helpful. So we'll take care. We'll take time to do that. So I probably should leave the sponges here. Let me come back. Got some more blue glass here for this. Some more dirt. So I'm going to head back to my base. I've got a couple other things that I've been doing off camera while I've been waiting for sponges to be collected again and other things. Um, I want to take, I want to show you guys what's been going on. Give you guys a quick hard cut about, um, you don't need to be on this travel with me, but I'll show you some more things. And then we're going to actually add something to my base that's been needed for a little while, not vital, but I really want to have for uh, one of our shops that we've been doing. So see you on the flip side. All right, so we are at spawn, and if I don't think I've shown this off yet. We've got our nice diamond blocked of where people could spawn. This is literally the center of the map. So we got a lot of stuff for people that want to take it if you're new to the server. Um, you can find details about it. You can find new stuff as far as players are concerned. And then if we come out here... Um, they've got a nice little bed upstairs so you can make this your temporary home. So Sean, nice work with this. Even has your own little cave if you'd like to go cave in behind there. Um, but let's go over to my house. Um, I've made a couple of improvements. I want to do another improvement on 
uh, film with you guys. Actually, I'm going to start it, talk, do a little talky talk stuff, and then I'm actually going to finish it off and show you guys the final version of it before I leave. Um, so first of all, if we come over here, we'll jump downstairs. I have plans for that. I think that's going to be maybe be the next Let's Play. I don't know. I've got new inspiration for that, um, but we'll t we'll talk about that next episode. So in here. Let's see, I can drop off my shovels. Don't need those until I head back. Um, in here, I have our um, trading area. And you'll notice there's a couple of new ones. We've got Lapis. Um, we've got the Cleric that can trade for Lapis. Um, actually, this is the best trade that you can get for Lapis itself. Um, it's only one or two. And then we got a Weaponsmith. And our Weaponsmith, the weapons aren't amazing. But I have yet to see one that has amazing weapons, so I'm okay with that. So those are our new guys. I'm still waiting to find a librarian that has um, mending on it. I really want to have a one that has mending, and we have a librarian right there. So I have altered this. Um, in fact, this was set up so that you would feed them, they would breed, they would cycle, and more people would get in there, and breed, cycle, and more people would get in there. I've altered it now so that... They end up here. So all the new blue, like blue glass, is the new additions. If I ever do decide to take all this out, I can just take it out, replace it, so that we can cycle back just in case we, anybody ever drowns or whatnot. I know which ones to take out. So we have these guys up here, and if we come back here, this is where we get set up. I've already installed these two guys. Um, eventually, I gotta replace this block once I get this person installed. I think the only other big one that I really need is the um, mending book, unless I get like an amazing trade. So let's see, I think this guy is a butcher. We do not need a butcher. Let him die in a minute. So the idea is we're hoping to get mending, obviously we need to get a lot of trades to get that, to unlock to see what they have, and it's kind of a cross your fingers kind of a setup because um, each trade is a little bit different because we're not having to do mending one two or three um, it, that helps with that process so it just depends shepherd we do not need sorry bud I have to get rid of you um, we do have our sheep farm down there I was trying to think which would be better to, and maybe you guys can leave some comments on this because I won't create the next episode until this one has gone up but my thought was um, we could work on that upstairs room that is all of the um, nether brick. All right, here we go. <laughs> How amazing is that? First one, I didn't even plan this. This is amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and let's lock him in and then I'll tell you guys what I was thinking in a minute. So we just come back here. I'm going to leave these railings in case I decide to loop around. Right now I don't have that expectation, um, but just in case. So we'll get rid of this, got to get rid of that. And then actually let's go ahead and do this and that and trap ourselves in here with them. I found it's really difficult because they just pop off that railing. So I just go ahead and get rid of the railing while I'm standing here. Push them in there, give it some light. And then dun dun, beautiful. Yeah, we should be good. So we'll look at that trade going. That is so amazing. I, the old way I was getting all the mending books was I was just AFK fishing, and that was taking forever to get mending. It took me just ridiculous amounts of time. So now we've got our mending book. In fact, I think I should label these because this one is I, I can't remember which one this is. Silk Touch, which is a great one to have, but I want to put mending, so I think I want to just label them because when you look at it, it actually tells you what it is. So I'll get to that. So we got some glass and trades going here, um, but what I was talking before was I, I'm trying to decide: do I want to create the room up there, or on the next Let's Play, do I want to um, work on the Nether track? to the water world that we have so i'll leave that up to you guys we're going to do both eventually um, it just depends on which one becomes the priority first so we got our fortune pick it's going to need mending eventually i wonder if we can find a place to get that but down here 
we have our AFK or our tree farm that we have going. Can get a ton of birch, get tons of oak. Um, but the problem is that we can't get a lot of the other trees because of how they're formed. So spruce and dark oak and the acacia, we can't do in here because of the way this is set up. So we can get a ton of wood, which is great. We need a ton of wood. Um, but the problem with that is, is we don't get the other wood. And if we have a wood shop, we need to have the other kind of wood as well. So my thought was, let's get all of this over here and we'll have an indoor um, little tree farm that's just a manual tree farm that we have to do. So I want to get all this set up. Let me start this to try to get the measurements out, kind of like what we did last time with this tree farm. Let me get the measurements of it first, then I'll pop back on and we'll have a discussion, um, a little talky talk episode. So give me one minute, guys. All right, guys, so I got the place lined out. I think this is how big I'm going to do it. If I do need to, I'm going to make it a little bigger. I'll show you guys off camera what I'm thinking. So I want to I want to get all this dug out. I'm going to get it high enough that we can actually grow trees. Probably not as high as this needs to be, though I may do it just for the sake of doing it. I was also toying with the idea of making this entire ceiling blue wool. I might do that. I'm not 100% sure. I am going to need the blue wool for the nether track out to the water uh to the water temple but we'll i think we'll just play with it as it is um see what we need to do but let's clear this out what i'm thinking is let's get some dirt down here some hoppers to collect all the saplings um, because they do not want to lose the saplings um, and then go ahead and just make an automated tree farm i'm thinking just to do a line of trees and then collect the saplings after they've fallen and use obviously using bone meal to hype them up, um, which means I'm gonna have to do a little bit of ho uh, hoppers and um, dispensers to shoot them up, uh, shoot the bone meal up. I want it just to automatically shoot bone meal up as it goes. So there's gonna be a lot of clicking. It'll be kind of annoying. So obviously there'll have to be an on off switch. I'll do all that off camera, show you guys how I did it whenever I get there. Oh, the sheep were eating. I'm like, what is that noise? So we'll, I'll get, I'll take care of that off camera. Do some redstone. I don't know if you guys like to watch redstone. You'll have to tell me if that's something you actually would enjoy watching, or if it's just simply mining. I've had several people say I love watching the mining. It's just good to enjoy to listen to you talk while you do something mundane. I don't know if that should be an insult, but that's okay. Um, so they just, you guys have mentioned you guys like this. You like talk, watching me talk about some kind of topic and then doing this which is a good transition to the conversation i want to have with you guys um minecraft theology always takes some kind of theological concept um this one's i can make it theo theological if you want it's more of just a good thing to do um talking about the idea of listening and how to listen well uh i there I would love to say that I am an amazing listener. The reality is, is I'm a, I'm probably a terrible listener who just knows all the right tricks and unfortunately still fumbles a lot with listening well. And this is, uh, first of all, I want to take in mind the listening in general. I think a lot of times we just get busy. We want to, if you guys are like me, someone comes to you with a problem whether it's as a youth pastor or uh, an employee or a parent or a spouse, and they come to you with a problem, your first reaction, if you're like me, is I wanna fix this, so I need to be thinking about how to solve it as soon as they get done talking. And the problem with that is, is if you are thinking of a solution while they're talking, you're not giving them your full concentration, and I'm a terrible multitasker as it is, let alone the fact of just deeply understanding body language and tone of voice and the actual words that they are saying and even what they're trying to say, even if they are emotional about the situation and not necessarily saying it well. And so for me, I want to fix the thing and I, I sometimes chart, start trying to fix it and stop listening before they're even done talking about the problem that they came to talk about in the first place. So 
I, I have the sense that this is not an unusual problem, that, the, that it's more common than people might think. I, I see this a lot with counseling um, and relationships, that we are just not listening to people. Um, somebody says something to us and we get angry. We get depressed. We get anxious. Um, we try to assume the role of this is now my problem when in fact all we need to do is listen. Um, there's actually a term for it out there for people that have gone through any kind of therapy or just taking good relationship classes. It's called active listening. So there's passive listening where it's probably what you did in school a lot to where you just sit there in class and and listen to what they have to say. And then there is the active listening where you are at the premiere of Star Wars or um you are on a first date with someone and you are just soaking in every single thing. Even now you can think back and quote lines from the movie or remember exactly what was being said or done on that first date. And if you think about it, you know all these details because you were actively listening in that process. You were making sure you listened to every single thing that was being said and and discussed and shown to you. And there's this mentality that listening is just something you can casually do, but it's actually something that's really difficult if you take the time to try to really listen to someone. And it's this mentality of shut up, listen, don't say anything, just be present. Um, And it, it does take a lot of effort to do something like that. I think I need to go empty my wares. Um, So active listening is difficult in general, in person. And then you can take in the technology aspect of active listening with trying to understand what is going on with, oh, whoops. Um, What's going on with someone when they're online and having active listening online and in the form of a tweet, that's really difficult. How in the world do you active listen to someone that's using social media and not using it well? And then there's the manner of active listening on social media whenever there's no tone, there's no body language that's being said unless you're using a video chat. And then how do you, so how do you actively listen in that, in that scenario as well? Um, and I wonder if we do that sometimes or if we are in this impulsive digital reaction and and that I speak to myself in this. I am not speaking to anyone other than me because when I see a tweet, I want to respond to it. When I see a post, a comment on a post that I made that I spent hours slaving over and someone disagreed with the philosophy of what I said, I get really upset. And so hear me say that I do this terribly all the time. Um, I have set up a lot of stuff in my life to help myself do this better. I think that there are ways for you to overcome the shortcomings of wanting to react. I really want to get this gold. Let's see. I still I still want to get that gold farm running, but we, we don't have it working yet. Um, and I really would love to improve it even beyond what I have. I've created this habit where I don't necessarily retweet or reply to someone until I fully understand what they mean. And if part of my reaction is I don't understand this and what you said that I do understand is upsetting, I don't respond until I truly know what you're trying to say. Well, that's no good. Huh. We've come this far. And there are spiders there. This is our uh, sheep farm. No, this is our uh, spiders. I'm sorry, not our spiders. That is a spider. You guys can't see this, but I'm ducking down to try to see. Um, This is where our... Yeah, this is our sheep farm. Because this is the redstone that leads to the tracks. Interesting. Can I do this? Weird. All right, so we got a lot of spiders under there too. Well, huh? I bet it only goes one over. I bet this is all clear right here. Let's check. Yeah, this is all clear. So I might have made it one too wide. I may just have to push this over one. That's okay. 
I only did it that far because that's what this one is. I could easily just make it this and extend it out further. I'd be okay with that. That's fine. I'll fix this if I need to. Well, I mean, I'm going to have to fix it, but... Okay. Actually, I might do it too, just because I don't want to use this nether brick. Interesting. All right. So anyways, I think listening online, there's a couple of things I've done. So that, that whole mentality of I need to understand what they're trying to say. And if I don't understand, I either need to get clarification from them or I just simply don't need to respond. A lot of times I want to respond because I want to have that dialogue with people. I want to socialize and connect with people. Part of its networking process, part of it's just I have a lot of friends online that I want to connect with, but does not necessarily mean I need to respond to every single little tweet or Facebook post or whatever else is going on. Um, the other version of it is getting an outside perspective. So a lot of times whenever I do get upset, I've taken it personally and I might be too close to the process itself. And so obviously I need to get an outside perspective and I have have that through church mag um, the slack channel i've used it a lot of different times whether in a um, one of the private conversations or just with the whole team there of asking them what they think about the situation what does this response mean um, how do i respond what do you guys infer from this and that's been really really helpful just to have their own comments now sometimes they they also have a stake in the game and it's personal for them and so they're just like piling on of let's go get them let's do this and so um it helps to just have a conversation and dialogue about it and then most of the time what happens in that is not coming up with the best answer but because i've dialogued with them i don't have the need to respond to them anymore and that's an interesting process of what happens if we just decide we don't need to respond to the people online so it's interesting to have a conversation about listening well and wanting to do that. Obviously, there's prayer and are we listening to God, um, but can we do that in a manner that is um, edifying to the process, both for them and for us? Um, because I would love to see Christianity just become this thing that's building up. Let me take an example. This is a conversation that we're starting to have I've pushed a little bit and we're going to ramp it up pretty quickly um, with a lot of different people outside of church mag is the idea of women in ministry what does that mean to have women in church tech ministry not from a denominational worldview I'm not here to trample on your denominational beliefs that's not my job I have my own and if you want to know what they are great I respect the fact that you have your opinion um, and we'll kind of just let it be in that manner. But, um, I don't believe that there's a faith out there that would say women helping within the church is a bad thing. I don't think of, I can't think of any denomination that would ever say that. And so whether you mean in a leadership role in general, or just simply serving well, um, women should have a spot and the problem with that, and if you watch some of these, there's an unprogrammed episode. We'll be doing a future podcast on this topic if it hasn't already come out yet, is that women are disproportionately represented within the technology field in general, and this plays out within church technology. And why in the world would we set the standards of what the world thinks and just follow the guidance of what the world says and instead follow the beliefs of what Christianity in and of itself would say, which is every woman is valuable and we should be serving alongside each other, regardless if it's um, technology or uh, youth ministry or whatever else it is that we need to serve alongside each other. And so this becomes very, it has the potential to become very volatile very quickly because women are living this out and men are not. Men are, uh, I'll be honest, most men, many men, maybe not most, that's a bad term, but many men could be ignorant to this very thought until they start to have a dialogue about it. Are women being upper, underrepresented in the entire church tech ministry of your church, of your denomination, of technology in general within the church? my experience in having conversations with people is yes 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 
And so this becomes a very charged, very potentially volatile conversation because men are talking from a, no, not at all. We would love to have women join and women from then why aren't you representing us more? And well, we want to take the best solution out there. And what if the best solution was just to have more women on board? And so there's a lot that can come from this of, are we actually listening to the other people in the conversation? Um, I'm, I'm thinking back, I, I was listening to, I love a whole bunch of different podcasts. Half the time, they're not even Christian, um, just because there's a lot that can be learned from that process. And one of the podcasts I listened to recently was, um, uh, they're part of the Gimlet series. I can't remember which one it is, but they were talking about debate. And I believe, maybe it wasn't even Gimlet, but I believe it was. Um, but they were talking about debate in general um, from a African-American standpoint that the debate culture is completely focused towards privileged um, people, which obviously African um, origin race is um, lacking in in general. Um, the, just that's the statistic that there is. And so should we revamp the debate process and they just go through this guy's life and look at what's been happening in this. And the interesting thing that came out of that for me was they don't listen. They don't understand um, what's being said, then they lose. If you, if you are a good debater, then you are first of all understanding their context and then making your own response in terms of their context. You have to know your stuff and that's good. And at a high school level, that might win you a debate or two. But if you wanna to go to nationals or college, you need to understand your side of it and their side of it. And I think that that's an interesting, a very interesting process to say, I understand what I believe, but what if you understand what you believe and what they believe as well and still hold to what you believe? And I think that that requires so much listening on your part. I'm not asking people to go and listen to heavy metal music and totally understand why people are into that. What did I just break? Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's just for the light. Let's fix this real quick. Um, I don't, I'm not advocating people go and just dive in deep to something that they don't, um, hold to as far as in their entire worldview. But I also think it's important for people like youth ministry. This is a huge one for youth ministry. If you do youth ministry, do you understand the culture of Snapchat? I'm not asking you to use Snapchat. I'm not even asking you to endorse Snapchat even though I think it's a great model um, and a great opportunity for you to share the gospel. But if you don't ever decide, if you decide never to use Snapchat, that's fine. Do you know why people use Snapchat? And if your answer is because they want to sext, then you're already missing out. You don't understand that platform. Um, can it be used for that? Yes. Um, but did you know that out of all the different platforms to use for inappropriate purposes like that, Snapchat is actually the most secure of them all and you can help yourself prevent ever being put in that situation um, and so as a youth pastor you can have a snapchat profile and never have to worry about getting sent anything inappropriate whereas facebook twitter anything like that your chances are actually really high to happen and that's just simply understanding the culture behind that and the other person's side of the debate now, I get that people don't want to be incorrectly associated with pedophilia and doing things that are inappropriate and adultery or whatever else, but I don't think that that's necessarily the process with Snapchat anymore. That's been the founder's story, but it's so much more than the founder's story. Now, ultimately, if you decide to use Snapchat, that's fine. Or if you decide to not use Snapchat, that's fine. Don't use it for inappropriate reasons. Um, I'll never endorse that. But could we continue to understand the other side of the debate and really start to have a healthy conversation? And ultimately, with the conversation on this, can we 
truly set ourselves to have a good conversation and listen well. And I mean in the sense of discipleship, I mean in the sense of praying, and even in the sense of evangelism. I think that there's a lot that can be done here. Obviously, I have my own mentality of wanting to do this well within a, a relationship mentality. Only two gravel? Oh, I got more gravel I got to go get. Um, but I think, obviously, so couples counseling, marriage counseling, stuff like that. But I don't think that we listen well, and I don't think we do it well online. And I speak for myself as much as anybody else. Um, I wonder what you guys think. What are your thoughts on listening, period, and listening in a digital life? How can we do that better? What can we do as far as hot topics that we are currently having on Church Mag in life in general? What can we do with that process as well? So I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Um, leave a comment down below. Do you guys listen well? Do you understand how to have a debate, a healthy debate, both in person and online? Uh, what does it mean for you to actively listen well? I'd love just to hear you guys' thoughts. This is one that I don't think I have all the answers to. I think I just have a, a job that helps me think about this a whole lot. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this. Let me go finish the walls in there, um, set up some hoppers and dirt, and get ready to, let's see, I want to do dispensers, so I'm going to have to make some more dispensers, um, but get ready to have that running here in just a minute, so I will jump right back. All right, guys, so I have the manual tree farm done, <clears throat> and let me just say that this was a little bit more difficult than initially I was thinking. First of all, I needed a whole lot of uh, hoppers, and so I needed some chests. Came over here, grinding out some logs for myself. A creeper, I think the light levels over here just weren't good right over here. In fact, just go ahead and do that for now. The light levels were not amazing. And so I'm sitting here, look, oh my goodness, pull out my pick. For some reason I went for my pick instead of my sword, which was right there. Backed up, backed up, backed up. And then it blew up and you'll see that there's cobblestone here i did not get that off in time unfortunately but i did get this fixed it wasn't working for a little while i had to go do some little bit of figuring out sorting out what was going on but this is fixed again it looks maybe a little bit different that's okay but this is the manual setup let me show you a little bit underneath i think i have to come here yeah take this one out too so initially I had these uh, dispensers actually underneath. For some reason, I thought that if the dispensers shot up through the ground, they could get the um, saplings because whenever we have our die farm, that's what we do with our die farm. So I initially had them up there, had a beautiful design. Everything was laid out wonderful, and then it didn't work. So I have to put the dispensers on the side um, running over there. And apparently there's thunderstorm going on. Okay. Um, so here's the switch, and if we run the switch, they actually click, and you'll notice they're going kind of slow. So I ran into an issue over here. Here's my timer I'm running with. Um, it's running at full speed right now. Everything seems to be wonderful. The, the redstone signal's coming down from there, coming through here, and then I have to slow it down, because if this goes too fast, they brown up, or they... Yeah, I guess brownout is what they call them. So they go too fast, then I ha that happens. So I have to slow this down just for these to continue to work. Because I can't put the redstone here with that, with the hoppers being there. So this is how I have to go about powering these suckers. So that's the setup now. The thunderstorm is apparently raging outside. It's all right. So we put these back, and then honestly, at this point, it's pretty easy setup. All the stuff's in here. We've got some extra stuff. We've already got some logs. And let's just try it out real quick. So I'm putting these every other one just to kind of maximize leaves right now. But once you get enough saplings going, it's not that big a deal. These puppies still need hoppers. So I'll get those going in a little while. Uh, sorry, did I say hoppers? These guys still need uh, bone meal. Oh, hello. So just knock all the wood out, which is part of the process. No, no, I want that, please. 
beautiful. And then come over here. I think the important thing to realize also is, and this is why it's okay that these suckers are slow, is that we need the saplings. And so if I space them out too close too many times, we may run low on saplings. Plus, we're going to lose some of the saplings here as well, putting using it this way. So I like the setup. I think it's good. All right, got the last tree here. Um, it's going to, these will just be manual and so it'll just be like a slow process. I think for the short term, I'll probably just let these grow slowly without using the bone meal when I don't need it. But if I'm ever in a rush, I can instantly get some trees. I've got the bone meal. The old setup, whenever it was underneath, I had the bone meal over there and it actually just, the hoppers automatically distributed into them. Um, so I can't do that now. I could put hoppers on top if I wanted to. Um, I may still do that, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to live with what I got right now. So literally all of these hoppers are daisy chained all the way around and to here. So the first ones might take a little while to get there. And there are still some dead zones, but that's okay. Um, especially if we start getting tons and tons of saplings. I want to basically get my storage up here full. Let me show you. We got our tree storage up here. If I can get this sapling base full um, for each one of these, I won't have a problem. I'm, I'll be more than happy with however I go about this. Um, I know I have more saplings up top when I was just manually planting them and just letting them be, so I can go grab those as well. Hopefully we'll get some more saplings out of this puppy. I gotta fill this up with more bone meal. But this is the design, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, this is a custom design I did. I still have to fix the trees because it looks ugly on this side. It looks awesome on this side. Beautiful, beautiful. On this side, it's gross. So I'll get that fixed. Still don't have a solution for that, so I'm just going to leave it as is for now. Tell me what you guys think, um, and I will make any corrections you guys think. Also, I need to know what the next step is. Do I go upstairs and build that little secret entrance area since I've been inspired? Or do I build the path to the water temple? Both are going to happen. Just which one should I do first? So let me know what you guys think. Uh, we will get going on that next set. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.